everyone, happy Spooktober! So as we all know, Halloween is going to be really different this year. So to bring the spirit of Halloween to you, I'll be teaching you all the ways you can play games with ghosts and demons. Today's video series is part 2 of 6 of playing games with demons, so please watch the first one if you haven't seen it yet. And I'll be playing one of the games as well, and not just any one, but the most dangerous one. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see if I survive. Alright, let's get into this. Have you ever wished you could know about your future? I'm sure most of you have. I certainly wish I could be told exactly what my future holds, for better or for worse. But what if your future held some bleak outcomes? Perhaps you could try to change it. But what if you couldn't? What if there was no way of knowing how you could change it or prevent an awful future? What if knowing the future was so harrowing and so bleak that it led to people taking their lives? Well, that's exactly what happened in Japan. Suji Ura, or the fortune telling game. You'll need one player, a comb, something to cover your face, and a crossroads. The use of a crossroads has always been quite intriguing to me, as many cultures all over the world have viewed the crossroads as a location thought to be between the worlds, and as such, a site where supernatural spirits can be contacted and paranormal events can take place. Begin the game at night. Go to the crossroads with your comb and face covering. Make the comb speak by strumming the teeth of the comb with your fingers three times and repeat the following. Suji Ura, Suji Ura, grant me a true response. Wait, watch your surroundings, and be patient at the crossroads until someone approaches. If no one approaches or if someone you know approaches, the game is over and you have to start over at another time. If a stranger approaches, you may continue the game. As soon as you see the stranger, cover your face with your face covering. Do not uncover your face at any point. When the stranger is close enough to speak to, you may request that they tell you your future. Be polite, do not demand or provoke them, and do not uncover your face. If the stranger does not answer, do not proceed. Let them leave and you may remove your face covering. If the stranger refuses, also do not proceed. When they leave you, you may remove the face covering and wait for another stranger to approach or try again at another time. If the stranger answers, you may continue, but do not remove your face covering. Listen carefully and closely to the stranger. When they are finished, thank them for their time and allow them to leave. Only when they are gone, you may remove your face covering. I honestly don't recommend playing this game, not just because of its history of leading to suicides, or for the sheer fact that standing alone at night awaiting an entity to approach you is quite chilling. But it may also be quite dangerous even if you bring a friend with you. Because you don't know what other people may be around the crossroads at night and you could be harmed. I'd imagine the best setting for this is a rural or a country farm area where people may live close by a crossroads and there's less a potential risk of other people lurking around like in a city area. And I'd still recommend bringing a friend to wait in a car close by to help you get out of there quick should things go awry. So please be careful, and as always, proceed of caution. You have been warned. The Midnight Man. This is a pretty scary game where you call a dark entity and must survive it until 3.33 a.m. You'll need paper and pencils, candles, a wooden front door, salt, a pin needle, and the lights in the house must be off. The game begins at midnight exactly. You can play this game alone or with others. To begin, first everyone that is playing must write their names on a piece of paper. Then you use the pin needle to poke your finger and drop blood onto the paper that has your name on it. By doing this, you're making a direct connection to yourself, so don't try to use anything else but your own blood. Next, you'll place the paper in front of your front door. Your front door has to be made of wood or the game will not work. Next, you light a candle and knock on the door 22 times, and on the 22nd knock, it has to be at 12 a.m. or the game will not work. Then you open the front door, blow out your candle, and close the door you have now summoned the Midnight Man. You need to immediately relight your candle. 
the goal for the rest of the game is to survive the Midnight Man. Everyone who is playing must walk around the house with their candle lit, avoiding the Midnight Man at all times until the clock strikes 3.33 a.m. That's when the Midnight Man leaves. If the candle blows out on its own, then that means the Midnight Man is near and you have 10 seconds to relight your candle. If you don't relight your candle in 10 seconds, then you must surround yourself with a circle of salt and wait until 3.33 a.m. If you fail to surround yourself with a circle of salt in time, then the Midnight Man will attack you and you will have hallucinations of your worst fears until 3.33 a.m. comes. Signs of the Midnight Man is if the candle goes out, you suddenly get really cold, you hear a loud whisper, or you see a dark humanoid figure within the darkness. Do not use someone else's blood on your paper, and do not stand in one spot until 3.33 a.m. You must move around or else the Midnight Man will find you. Do not at any point fall asleep during the Midnight Man game, and do not leave the house during the Midnight Man game. Do not use a lighter or some different light source in place of a candle. Do not turn off the lights during the Midnight Man game, and do not, I mean do not try to provoke the Midnight Man. The Midnight Man is an unknown entity of a dark nature. So provoking it is only inviting harm. The Three Kings Ritual. It may sound familiar, but this is not the Three Kings of a biblical nature. It is one of the lesser known, yet still quite dangerous rituals performed to summon three dark spirits. This game requires two people. You must be sober, you must be stable, and not tired. Do not, I repeat, do not attempt to play this by yourself. You need another person for safety. This game also requires a large windowless room, so preferably a basement. You'll also need candles, a bucket of water, a mug, an electric fan, two mirrors, three chairs, an alarm clock, a fully charged cell phone, and one object with sentimental value. Have all your supplies ready, and the game begins at 11 p.m. Place one chair facing north in the center of the room. This is the throne. Place the other two chairs on either side facing towards the throne, but at an arm's length away from it. These two chairs belong to the queen and the fool. Next, place a mirror on the queen's chair and the other on the fool's chair. Both mirrors should line up to face the throne, so that if you are seated in the throne, you can see yourself from your peripheral view in both mirrors. Place the bucket and the mug in front of the throne, but just out of reach. Then place the fan behind the throne and set it on medium or low. Now go into your bedroom, set the alarm clock for 3.30 a.m., and place the candles, a lighter, and your cell phone next to your bed. Turn the lights off and hold your sentimental object. Then climb into bed and go to sleep. At 3.30 in the morning, your alarm will go off. Stop the alarm, but keep the lights off. Hold on to your sentimental object and cell phone. Light one candle and then return to the throne room with the chairs and the mirrors. If all goes according to plan, you should be sitting on your throne by 3.33 a.m. and no later holding your cell phone, a burning candle, and a sentimental object. A few warnings about this game. Do not continue the game if your cell phone is not fully charged. Your alarm clock did not go off at exactly 3.30 a.m. The door to your throne room is closed. The fan is turned off, or you are not seated in your throne by 3.33 a.m. in the morning. If any of these rules are broken, get the hell out of the house. I am not kidding. Take everyone there with you and do not come back until at least 6 a.m. in the morning. If all goes well and there are no issues and you are seated in your throne by 3.33 a.m., then the game can proceed. While seated in your throne, do not at any point look directly at the mirrors. Your partner must wait outside of the throne room during the game. Also, do not let the candle go out. Should your body move, the fan behind you will blow out the candle, making you vulnerable. With your eyes focused on the darkness in front of you, begin asking questions. This is similar to the method of scrying in the dark, which can be quite risky and potentially dangerous. The answers, if you receive any, will come from the mirrors on either side. But again, do not look directly at the mirrors. 
While listening to the replies, you must remember one thing. The answers will be coming from either the fool or the queen, but you may not know which is which. So be careful about following any advice you are given. The game continues until 4.34 a.m. Do not leave the throne until then. At 4.34 a.m., your partner will end the game by calling out your name. If this doesn't work, then he or she should call your cell phone. Should this fail to bring you out of the game, your partner should enter the room and use the mug filled with water from the bucket to snap you out of it. This is a very dangerous game, so proceed of caution. And never play a game if you think you can't handle it. Demonic entities can sense your fear. Well, that's it for now. Remember, I'll be playing the most dangerous game with demons in this series, so keep watching this series to see that. Thank you so much for watching, and stay spooky, everyone.